Hello everybody, I'm Ian Abernethy and in this video I want to share with you a pad drill for the first half of Seipai Kata. For, so for those that are familiar with how we approach Seipai, we have a flow drill for the first half, we have a flow drill for the second half, and obviously you put them together you have a flow drill for the whole Kata. Uh, and we also have pad drills that go along with that, so there's pad drills that kind of mirror the flow drills. Now what these are for is, is when you're short on time, right? You just say, okay, I haven't got time to burrow deep on any individual lesson that the cat is showing, I just want to quickly run through it all, you know, just keep all of it kind Kind of fresh, revise some key ideas. So just like the solo categories, you know, solo categories, you know, to uh, quick, a quick run through when you haven't got a partner to train with, right? Uh, when we've got the pad drills, it's when we haven't got a partner to train with, but we're short on time, or we're short on time for this particular aspect. So we'll do the, 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 the cutter, we'll do the partner drill, the flow drills, so quickly run through everything, uh, then we can do the pad drill equivalents, and we've touched on all parts of it. That these are not some kind of ultimate bunkai just because they cover the whole form, nor are they presented as some as is combination or some replication of a real fight. These are lots of individual discrete lessons. Every one of these discrete lessons should be drilled in lots of different ways, but we've taken these individual lessons and put them end to end in a way that mirrors the cutter there for time efficient practice on those days where we maybe haven't got as much time as we like, or we just want to touch on Seipai and maybe concentrate on, on something else. Nevertheless, I hope that explains the context and I hope you enjoy looking at this uh, flow drill for the uh, pad, pad drill, flow pad drill for the first half of Seipai Kata. So we've done a, a flow drill for the first half of say by Kata, which was partners reaching out and grabs you in some way, go for an eye gouge you, straight his arms up, put the arms through, roll them down, go elbow in the face which he blocks, hurry down hip towards the groin, peel him up over the here, shoot over the neck, might get in that leg and chops him back, hook this arm through from here, elbow, elbow, turn and do the arm by skipping ahead in the cutter a little bit, he then counters this, I move through and hit him into the groin from there, step forward and slam him, step in, catch that leg, shoot up, take him down, if his arm's in the way of his head, use one arm to take the arm out of the way as you hit him, in the downward double punch, right? So that was the version that we did yesterday. They were saying, and they're great, those floor drills are lovely for placement, and they're nice for flow, because you're actually kind of touching the target, but you've got no impact. So now what we do is we take out the pads where the placement, the flow gets messed up a little bit, but at least we're getting a deep thing. So he starts off with both arms against my chest, stimulating the, the grab and reach for the, the arm. And then roll the arm through. You see the immediate problem here is I've got both of his arms trapped. So I need to let him get the pads away in, in, into this position. Ideally you want this one on front because it will fall better because I'll be touching this elbow in a moment. So I've got to there, I'll let my partner move the pads out of the way. The brace go well away from his face so there's no point of him getting injured. Step in with his foot, drive the elbow in from here. I then bring this hand towards his elbow from here. Christopher dresses back by step back with a foot to create a bit of space. I keep my hand on the elbow like I did and he puts a pad down there. You notice it's not in front of his groin, it's slightly off to one side. So there's no chance of me hitting the pad and accidentally hitting his groin. So stepping in, I've got this movement here. I then bring this arm through, in which case Christopher then steps off the line. He then puts a pad here so his, his, his fake neck is where his real neck would have been. Right, shoot straight from here. The next thing he drops the pad away for the, the front kick. Uh, I, I, I would be doing a front kick, but you can't really front kick me, so he puts it there for a groin kick. But in a groin kick, in reality, he'll still elicit the same response as a thigh kick. Shoot for the groin kick. And then hook this arm through, and then comes back the other way. Now, now the way I would be is here, which would be like the cat. The hickatay's on your hip, that attacks hit the target. Because his fake head is further forward than his real head, I have to slacken the hickatay off a little bit. Right, so I'm going to shoot well away from it. He then drops it down there, so I can do the downward one, make sure you don't accidentally hit his arm, keep it out of the way, drop down from here. I then go up to do the arm bar, which again he pushes away and counters it from there. I circle around and look for it. it, it when I'm doing the other bit for actuality, I don't need to look, it's fine, my head's here. I know where he's going, so I can feel his body. But when it, from there, again, partner's going to hold the part slightly off to one side, look for where it is, and you're here. So you get a, a practice of it with safely. Just turn it on the side, it's just a bit of this one. And then again, crushing into him from there, moving, let him get that arm out of the way. Doesn't really make much difference for the throw if it gets trapped, but it just felt like the safer the drill, it's easier if you've got his arms through. And then catch his leg, tap that one as he goes down. As he lands, he puts one pad in front of the other one, which stimulates him cowering. And then pull that pad out of the way, you're here. You're down with double punch. And then I can move. So we should walk it one more time, that's all right. Uh, yeah, let's do this side of it, we can see so. Arms start across the chest, eye gouge to start with. Roll the arms through, give you a second from there, from there. Drops the pad down, move the arms through, shoot off, there, eye again. Move it across, empty, drops down, empty, arm bar, counters, drawing heat, push, 
move through. Again, remember this isn't a sweep, I'm just clipping it. Takes him down from there, move the pad out the way, hit and then move away. So okay, the same way on the pads, at least the first half. This is um, uh, a quick summary of our safe live drill, uh, taking us up with a downward double punch, if you like to call it that. So we're starting off with a, a double grip, we do a throw grip, you can do it with a double lapel grip as well. Knocking this arm down to turn a twist, same down, I push my thumb towards his arm. So hopefully I'm trying to knock that off a little bit, I'm creating a bit of space, his arms are going straight. Once I've got that, I slide this arm over the top as I come step forwards and grab it. Just like the cat does then, I'm levering down on this side, upwards on this side, to turn and push the arms over. Now hopefully they end up just like this and they're crossed, which means I'll be able to land that elbow, you know, bang. Now for the sake of the drill, as I, I mess that up, he manages to jam it. So I've got, here's done the elbow. What I'm feeling of course now is my arm went that way, his energy's coming back this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to yield it and guide it past, just the distance if necessary, straight downwards with this arm. This arm stays up, so it's still in contact and it's feeling. Now once you've done that, of course, the natural thing you're going to feel next is this. He's going to move his line. So as he moves his line, I guide this one past. I keep this one up here just to be aware of where this one is. From there, I'm on the inside. So that's perfect. I can straighten the shoulder up the neck. I'm looking straight at that leg. From there, I put the mic here and drop him back. The next two elbows would depend on where his head is. Right, you know, if it's low, we do the dropping one. If it's up, we do the, uh, the, the horizontal one. For sake of the drill, we're going to do both. So I underhook this arm and step back and get the distance right. Come through this way, come over this way. So I've got elbow to the jaw, elbow to the spine. What I then do, turn around this way so people can see, I overwrap this arm and put my arm bar around. For the sake of it, he's going to do the escape that Mabuni recommends in his book as he knees me and pushes this arm up. So we're going to jump to the relevant part of the cutter from there where I keep this arm tight. As I spin around from there, slam it in the groin. Head is off to the side, so I'm not going to eat that, that arm from there. Um, the, the grip on this is just, it's just pressure, you know, because that, that's naturally the way it's going to be. So as he escapes from there, from there, again, it's just, bang, it's just here. I've just got pressure on it. So it's not a strong grip, so I'm going to let go of that in a split second. Bring my arms in to cover my head, and when I was bang, slam it. Um, if he steps back like he did, then it would fall on the cat. If he didn't, then I'd attack that lead leg. That's it. For the sake of the drill, I'm going to go this one. That's what the cat does. I then step in behind, keeping the forward pressure. This elbow pushes, because what I'm really looking for is the weight to go off that leg. So bang, that needs to be quite solid in practice. The same time it taps that leg as it happens. So we're in that position. I then extend along the legs I'm pushing. And this is, and don't think of it as a, as a talk about a sweep, because it means you're, your weight's moving the wrong way. Right? Um, you're taking your weight this direction when you want to go that way. Just block his foot. Right, so you're pushing there, so you're getting back on the floor. When he falls from there, there's two ways of looking at this downward double punch. One is that you just accelerate him into the ground. So as he's falling, you add to it, which obviously we don't want to do without crash mats and stuff. And the next thing we've got is we're pushing his arm down to hit down here. Or if his arm was already up, we can open it up this way to hit down to here. This leg, if it becomes an issue, we can push away as we step back, and that will be the lower your damper eye. So the full thing again, just walk through quickly. Uh, start from here, uh, eye gouge, roll, come through elbow, push, move, shoot on my again. Pull, elbow, elbow, golf, the elbow, tap his groin, hit, slam, moving from there, tuck the leg, make sure he's not going to hit the wood. Push that arm down, hit. If the leg's appropriate, you can push it away. If not, you just move off into this position. So it's a drill, first half of the cat and done in next to no time at all. And we'll do it on the pads later. Full contact so you can get a feel for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>